Nancy Dalton, Steve Whitmore, Eddie Worth, Mary Zendel, Mary Fuller. All right, Larry, you did the sophisticates on television. What do you remember of it? This is on? Okay. Unfortunately, not very much. <laughs> um, I remember the lift, the, the things, angle things, and uh, I remember the dresses, and I remember some imagery of having something up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for a rehearsal. And sweep the floor at the same time. But um, No mention of penguins. <laughs> not a word about penguins that I remember. Um, I don't know. Bill Gusky did it, too. And he yeah, said, Bill. He said he didn't there. remember anything about uh, penguins. But it was a repeat. I mean, it was a very popular number. You kept, I think you did it twice or three times, maybe. I'm not sure. I know that we did <laughs> Rampart Street more than once. Um, which brings me to... A story about Rampart Street. Um, and it was, I was on the last weekly Como show, and I think it was 62 63 season, and Bill Gusky was on it, and Wally Siebert, who was Peter's assistant, and Dee Erickson, and Carolyn Morris, and Jane Turner. Uh, unfortunately, Bill and I are the only ones still with us. <coughs> but, um, uh, but, Possibly Carolyn is, but nobody's heard of her in so many years. She had a terrible um, motorcycle accident many years ago and went home and nobody's ever heard of her since. But anyway, uh, the six of us and Peter were asked to do uh, Rampart Street for Linda B. Johnson's birthday party at the old Madison Square Garden, which was on 8th Avenue between 49th and 50th. And it took up the whole block. So we got there. It was originally built, evidently, as a boxing arena. So it was one of the biggest theater in the rounds you've ever seen. Um, and I think we had rehearsed on stage maybe once to block it, because it wasn't around. And uh, we were doing it to play back. And this huge, huge, huge oval-shaped building, which had an indoor, uh, like, vomitorium hallway that went all <laughs> the way around, it just inside of it, and to run around that whole block in an oval, so to speak. And then there were doorways where you entered along the way that led aisles that led down to the stage, like any theater in the round. And so we met at the appointed place, the dressing room, we got our costumes, and we met Peter, and we were locked out of the actual arena part. And because it was LBJ, the President of the United States, birthday, there were security guards on every door. And so we met with Peter, and he said, okay, can't, come on, come on, come on, follow me. We're just gonna go over here, I think it's door number three. So we all got the costumes and we had our polar straw hats and we followed Peter to the door and the security guard said, who are you, what are you doing here? Said, well, we've got to slumber, we're gonna do a slumber. And he said, no, 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 I haven't got clearance for you to go through here. So he said, oh, this must be the wrong door. So we went, <laughs> and we got another door. Okay, this is it, kids. And then, that security guard said, no, 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 you can't come in here. You don't have clearance. He said, oh, well maybe, then follow me. So <laughs> we finally got to a door and we started, to, we knew that we were about to be on. And Peter said to the security guard, but we're, we're in the show, we're, just, we're gonna go on. So he just pushed past him and we followed him because the, the security guard said, if you go in there without anybody knowing who you are, you could get shot. <laughs> he said, but we got this number, we gotta go in. <laughs> we followed him into the jaws of hell. We, were all, we got through the door and we were all like this. It's now stay low. <laughs> Put the music start. And then when it's time, pop up. And they'll hit us with the spotlight. 
And we thought, I was thinking, if we pop up and they shoot us, what the hell? <laughs> we all went, all six of us and him. We belonged. And we popped up and the lights came on. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> and nobody shot us, thank God. <laughs> that was really good story. My first experience with Peter, I'll just tell this one more story and then pass it on. Uh, when I was 19, and I had been in New York several months, and I auditioned, West Side Story had opened on uh, Thursday, in October of 57, I think it was. And Friday, the day after the opening, they had an audition for a jet swing. They didn't have a swing yet. And uh, I went, and there were, of course, over 100 guys there, even then. Most of them were too old, like we are now. <laughs> and uh, so I got asked to come back with five other guys, there were six of us, on the following Monday, which was, well, it opened on Thursday, the audition was Friday, the callback was Monday, so it was still in the first week of the run. And uh, I hadn't seen the show. I mean, I knew it was a big hit, and it was Jerry Robbins and all that stuff, but I was still pretty green. And so I came back, and we went through the combinations, the end of Cool, and I don't know what else we did, but um, I remember Peter in the wings of the Winter Garden Theater. He, pull, he pulled me aside for some reason. He said, come here, kid. I want to show you something about the style. So he was working with me in the wings on the style of the combination. And I got the job. Thank you very much, Peter. You helped me a lot. So I got to be the original swing of West Side Story for the Jet. And uh, that was my first brother. Not an easy job, either. No. Oh, and Harvey, what you replaced Tommy Abbott uh -huh. when Jerry formed Valley's USA. Uh -huh. And that's about the time I left the show and went to Music Man. Thank you. Steve. Yes. 